Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily broadcast. My name is Barry Selby, and I am a best-selling author, speaker, and relationship attraction expert, and help strong, successful women find balance in love, life, and business. It's a little itchy. That was kind of interesting. And uh, I'd, <laughs> I'm also a passionate champion of the divine feminine. And I do these talks every day called Messages from the Masculine to Inspire the Feminine Heart. And today's is number 396. This week I'm going to hit 400. It's inevitable. Well, it seems to be that way. And these talks every day have something to do with relationships, romance, masculine feminine polarity, purpose, things like that. And today the topic is about men and their mothers and women and their fathers. Or actually, women and their fathers, men and their mothers. And I've got a few different pieces to put on the table to help you with this. So let's jump in. Oh, before I do that, since I've now officially launched my podcast, I'll let you know that you can watch all my broadcasts, at least while well, I'm building the library. So at this point in time, there's around 20, 25 uploaded, but I'm going to eventually load all of these onto my podcast. So you better listen to them when you're driving, riding, doing other things. So you have that feature as well. So podcast as well as my YouTube channel and on my Facebook page, because I figured, you know what? multi-purpose so getting into the topic so men and their mothers women and their father women and fathers and yeah <laughs> either it's the other way around so first of all I want to speak to the the origin story as it were which is basically the um, imprinting and love wiring we get when we're younger you see part of this the challenge with being raised <laughs> Hang this. Part of the challenge of raising our kids, I'll put it that way around, being a parent with kids, and I don't have any at the moment, so I'm speaking as a observation of others, so just to be clear. The biggest challenge that most parents have with children is there's no user manual. Kids don't get born with a little handbook of how to use, how to grow them and, and, and how to grow them, how to raise them. And parents don't get married and get given a, a user manual by the minister, the priest, the rabbi, whoever they get married by it that says, this is how to raise a family, have kids. Now, there have been books written about it. Um, you know, Dr. Spock's books were some of the ones that were famous about 20 years ago. But the reality is that we don't have innate skills that are obvious about raising children. So when you're a child of parents who don't know how to raise you, bear that in mind as a first piece. I'm not saying that you should excuse your parents, but just be aware of the fact that most of us are being raised by parents who didn't have a lot of skills. Just reality. Now, on top of that, there's a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm not going to go down that path necessarily, or that might show up later in the conversation, but I do want to speak to the attachments we have. And this is kind of the piece I want to get to, is attachment between child and parent, and how that then plays out as an adult. So, and usually opposite gender, because I'm talking, about, I'm talking mostly about heterosexual relationship and partners in this conversation, because that's my, my, my main focus, and it's my own experience, and it's the people I work with mostly. So just to put that in context. Um, there's a whole other piece about the gay relationship with parents that I, I have some thoughts about, but I'm not going to put them in this broadcast because that'll be hearsay in some ways because it's not my experience, let's be honest. So, women oftentimes get raised up by a father that they tend to either idolize or um, hate, but we're putting it. Not, all, not always, but there's sort of one or the other. And so, I'm aware of for many of the women I've worked with as clients that their relationship with their father is fractured at least. It's not healthy, it's not whole, it's not loving. But on the other extreme, on this occasion, the case I've had with friends of mine and also relationship partners in the past, where the relationship with their father was so wonderful that it can be challenging. The reason it's challenging is this. Ladies, if you're watching, if you're raised by a father who you absolutely adore and idolize and love and grateful for him raising and everything else, which is awesome, the challenge can be when you're dating men is that you raise, you put a standard out there, subconsciously maybe, not even intentionally, although sometimes it is overt, where the men you look at, you compare side by side with your father, which is actually an impossible standard. Because part of this, okay, I've got to bring this one up. Part of this is when you were a child, things happen in your life that you don't remember consciously. So the picture you have with your father, particularly if as an adult, you maybe he passed away, and maybe pass when you're younger, what will tend to happen, and we'll do the reverse for men, men and their mothers too, because some of this is true on both sides, that you have an idolized image of your father that no man can match up to. It happens. I'm not saying, and these, and these again are suggestions, and, um, and everything I'm offering, by the way, in this talk, 
is things that I recommend you tr you try on for yourself. They're not the rules. They're not the um, full spectrum of what's available. These are just ideas and suggestions that I know about working with clients and in my own experience that may assist you in getting clarity about your own position. Okay, just to be clear. So I'll make sure you got that on the table. So um, another piece of the puzzle, which is, okay, it's doing that. Well, it's my, my camera's doing strange things again. I'm definitely going to do some stuff, something about my phone camera that I'm using. Anyway, continuing. So when you have a relationship with your father that is so perfect in your memory, again, not necessarily accurate, but perfect, it's hard for you to date men without comparing with him. And those men have got a hard uphill battle to appear appropriate and respectful and everything you, you, des you need them to be to qualify with your father. So be aware of that because it may come to the point where you start realizing that there'll never be a man who will do that and maybe you need to let go of that a little bit and start seeing the men for who they are. Now, this is a big stretch, I know, for some women. It's to really start seeing men as they really are with their faults, their failings, their successes, their amazing gifts and all those other things and see them as individuals that aren't meant to be like your father. So that's one piece. Actually, it's two pieces. Let me switch sides for a second. So men and their mothers. One thing I've heard many times, I think it's true, is that a man will be better in relationship with a woman when he had a loving relationship with his mother. And there are definitely cases and experiences I know and definitely have, I've watched this happen where boys were raised by women who basically couldn't express their loving to them. They could have been a stepmother, maybe been their birth mother, or some other royal challenges. So when they're an adult, they don't know how to really become, to be loving to a woman the way that they could be, should be, would be ideally. So there's a challenge in that place. On the other hand, well, let me just finish the, foot, the other part of part one of that. So women, men who have a healthy relationship with their mothers will generally have a much healthier respect and appreciation of women. I'll speak for myself, I had that experience. So <laughs> I believe that may have seeded and actually underlies how I am around women because of the fact I was raised by a woman who she, as much as she had her faults, she, and, and I'm being, being polite because she, she's passed away, but she was probably the, the center of our family growing up for me. So she was that strongest light and love center in the family, the way I look at back in it now mainly because she was the only woman in the family, my brother and my father and myself were all the boys. But the reality is that is that men that are raised by women, that's raised by mothers that they love and respect, will carry that over into a relationship. That's a good thing. The other, on the other hand, as I was about to mention, there are, there are women who are out there, mothers who will never let go of their sons. And I mean that from a very intentionally blunt way. And so what happens is they tend to keep very into, and no, let me, let me add on this one. This especially happens when the mother's a widow. When mother has lost her, when a, when a woman lost her husband, she may transfer her affections and love to her son, not to fulfill any sexual place, so don't get any kinky ideas like that. Sorry, that was me, that was you. Uh, <laughs> but the reality is that the, that the focus of investment of time, energy, and, 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 and um, I want to make sure everything's okay, gets transferred to the son. So when the man is out in relationship with a woman, the mother can be challenging because she's not being respectful of the boundaries because she's, she's invested. And it, it comes from a, a loving place, but the execution of it, the expression of it isn't healthy. Not for the son, not for the other woman either. So part of that shift can be having a real honest conversation, the son with the mother, to really say, you know, much as the loving is there, when it needs to have healthy boundaries. And that's one of the things that all of these different um, relationship paradigms I'm talking about is one of those big challenges is having healthy boundaries, regardless of the, um, the gender of parent to child. Because we all have these opportunities to grow into our own uniqueness. And for some parents, letting their child grow up to being a full adult and letting them go you know, uh, Rumi talks about how children come through us, not from us, and about how it's about not our, not our work to control them, but to free them. And so to understand that in life, it means that parents really have to be respectful that the kids' choices are their own, especially when they're adults, not I'm talking about when they're 15, 16, but when they're 25, 35, 45, it's time you give them space to live their own life. Now, if they're not, that's another story. But to second guess them, to be invested in their lives and to not let them have freedom in their relationship choices, isn't healthy in either direction. 
So that's a cautionary tale, by the way, to be up for another time. But for many men and for many women, their relationship with their parents has that impact. Okay, I've got to put this piece in. This is the piece I thought I wouldn't need to, but I need to put this in anyway. So I've given you the point of view about men and their mothers and men and the fa- women and their fathers. There's, okay, I put this piece in there. I saw two things show up, but the other one doesn't fit now. Unless it does, we'll see. So so, so one part of this is, um, I shared about that, that we didn't come in with user manuals. And, and we didn't, as children, we're raised by the best that parents can do. The challenge with that also, besides the um, opposite, gen- opposite um, gender connection between parent and child, is the imprinting we take on. I've talked about this before, but just to quickly give a little, a little um, Cliff Notes version, that we watch our parents as children. We watch them without realizing we're taking on like a, like a tape recorder, if you remember, if you remember tape recorders. Um, that is a while ago, isn't it? We take on what they're doing and the way they relate to each other as the way that we think we should do it. And we do this without realizing we're actually taping it. It's almost like putting it into a rec- tape recorder, using that term again, I know for some of you they go, I remember those, and some people don't. And put it away in a filing drawer that we don't think about. So as an adult, we don't know it's in there, but it's still working. And so the recording we made as a child of how relationships are based on what we saw our parents do becomes the guidance system we use as an adult in our relationships. But we're not aware of it. It's totally under the radar. And that's one of those challenges because subconscious programming, because it's subconscious, is invisible to our awareness until we become aware of it. And so the dance we have in relationships, the opportunities we take to advance our love life, as it were, is also heavily influenced by those automatic programs in the subconscious. And if we don't, if we don't, if we don't take action to course correct those programs inside, because to be honest, most of our parental relationships were doing the best they could with what they knew how. They went out to make our life hell. In some cases they were, but most times they're not. They were doing the best they job they knew how, but the pro- the challenge is we don't necessarily know that what we can have in a relationship is better or different from what they gave us as their example. So if you're in a place where you're hitting that limit now and you're saying, no, I want something different, I want something better relationship, it's likely that you're still playing that tape inside, that recording of what happened when you were a child. That can be changed, by the way. That tape can be reprogrammed, as it were, because it's not going to necessarily be erased, because you still need some framework but it's how do you make the framework work for you where you want to go in your relationships? Hang on, I'm just seeing if the other piece wants to come through. Oh, this is, this happens in my broadcast, by the way. I have a few ideas that pop in, and then I get to speak about them when they exhaust them. When I exhaust them, I'm like, oh, so is another one coming through? And no, there's not. So this is this is the crux, as it were, or the main thing you want to make sure you understand, is that us human beings, <laughs> as adults tend to have a lot of influences in our awareness about how we choose love. Now, for some of us, that's influenced by the world around us, not just our parents who were before us and who were the big people when we were kids, showing us how to do it, but by what we watch on, even what we see on TV. So, it's always good, this is a big tip, by the way, to look at your relationships, to look at your um, dating practices, from a place of clarity and um, witnessing. And I mean to say it this way, is that we may not realize that we've picked up some bad habits over the years. And some of you know who you are. So that when you do go out on dates, you don't use those um, modeled teachings from somewhere else. You actually, let me try this one on for size. If you go on a date with somebody, how about this? you be honest. You don't play games, you don't put on certain pretenses or use certain scripts that you know you've heard before that sound good or use a somewhat routine you've used before. How about you're just in the moment, honest, spelling, speaking your truth and asking to know what the other person's about. This radical idea is called honesty. <laughs> and it can be a very powerful way to learn how to be in a relationship. Now, I suggest you actually use this tool in every relationship, not just in romantic ones, and also not just when you go on dates, but when you're in the relationship. So part of what this relates back to the first thing, so I'm just tying it all back together, apparently I am anyway, is when you become more witness, when you become able to witness more of your life, and you can in a way observe what you're doing, that like step back from what's happening, which you can do if you have practice of this, it's a skill you can learn, 
if you've already done it. Most of us know how to do this, we just don't always claim we can do it. Watch how you interact. Because you might notice when you're interacting with somebody, they're actually walking through that um, interaction using the mindset of your parent or both parents versus your own freedom to choose. And when you start seeing that, you're gonna go, oh, hang on a second, and you can change that. But it's that default wiring, that automatic programming that we tend to run without thinking about it, where we end up making choices in a relationship that aren't our intentional free choices. They're our tape recorded ones, as I mentioned. And so being able to witness is a first step to detaching that playback from the recorder so you can re-choose re, re or choose differently your dating relationship experiences. I hope that makes sense. Now, one back end piece for the beginning again, just to wrap it fully up. I spoke about how for men and their mothers and women and their fathers, both the upbringing and then the, the adult um, paradigm as well. There's one other piece in there, I think. Maybe there was, maybe not. No, I covered that, okay. I'm just checking to make sure I covered everything so you got what I intended to give you in this broadcast. Um, I think that's it. That must be it. I haven't had any questions show up on the screen and I haven't had any other downloads come through, so I guess this is it for this this broadcast. Um, so in summary, um, well, just a quick, quick PS postscript bottom line on this is, if this speaks to you, let me know. I'd love to know in the comments if this is value for, the, for you. Um, if you wanna watch this broadcast after it's been played, it will be show up and replay on my wall on Facebook as well as on my business page on Facebook, that's where it starts, and that's barryselby.author. I also put these onto my YouTube, so they'll be on my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, and the playlist is Messages from the Masculine, Messages from the Masculine, and they are now starting to appear on my podcast on iTunes, which is Messages from the Masculine, so you can find them there, um, in audio format. Then, what else? Oh yes, if this is a challenge for you, and you want help in this area, this is my speciality, as you may have guessed, I do offer a complimentary conversation, sorry, complimentary clarity conversation, it's good to be clear, that you can grab for yourself. It's a 30 minute conversation, my gift to you, it doesn't cost you anything, just a time. Go to my website, which is barryselby.com. Yes, I do have my name on everything, um, at least of mine. And if you click on the Let's Chat button on the left-hand side of the menu, you can sign up there for a discovery session. Also on there is the video blog, which is where these will end up, although I'm looking to reformat that sometime soon to make them more um, easily viewable, because that's almost 400 broadcasts on one page, is a lot of content. As well as my book is on there, if you wanna get my book, that's recommended reading hint hint and my online program as well as my coaching and with that I think I've given you everything I need and everything you need hopefully it's been of help to you if this makes sense let me know in the comments again if you have any questions after I sign up I will answer them in the comments if you want to get some more help you can message me over social media or again you can sign up for a discovery session and if you know anybody should watch this please share it with them it might just inspire them or scare the living daylights out of them <laughs> or both <laughs> So thanks for watching and thanks for being with me. I will see you again tomorrow for my daily broadcast and uh, I think that's it. Take care, bye.